Rumpelstiltskin. Once upon a time, there was a small kingdom at the edge of a dark wood forest. Tales were told about the evil presence that lived in the forest. Still, people in the kingdom were living happily under the wise rule of a young king. There lived a poor miller with his daughter. She was very beautiful and charming. The miller was a chatterbox and had a habit of exaggerating what he told to others. The miller had fooled many people many times. So they complained about the miller to the king. The king decided to teach him a lesson and called him to visit. My dear majesty, thank you for giving me the honor to meet you. Since you don't know anything about me, I would like to tell you about my daughter and me. Yes, please, go ahead. I have a daughter who is the most beautiful girl in the world. But more than that, she can spin gold out of straw. That is an art that pleases me well. If your daughter is as clever as you say, bring her to my castle that I may put her to the proof. Uh, yes, 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 sure, my majesty. Miller went home and told his daughter all about it. I always told you, don't lie to anyone. Now you are trapped in your own lie. Father was speechless and ashamed of himself. Both left for the castle to face the upcoming disasters. Oh, welcome, Mr. Miller. Welcome, beautiful lady. You are as beautiful as your father described. I hope you would spin the gold from straw. Let's not waste any time. Come with me. The king himself led her into a room that was quite full of straws and gave her a wheel and spindle. Now set to work. And if by early morning you have not spun this straw to gold, you and your father shall die. Keep the guard. Be sure she does not escape. The poor miller's daughter didn't know what to do. Her distress grew so great that she began to weep. Suddenly a bright light beamed, and there appeared a fearsome-looking little man. Good evening, Miller's daughter. Why are you crying? Oh, I have got to spin gold out of straw, and I don't understand how to do it. Hmm. What will you give me if I spin it for you? I can give you my necklace. The little man took the necklace, seated himself before the wheel, and whirr, 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 three times round, and the bobbin was full. Then he took up another, and whirr, 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 three times round, and they were full. And so he went on till the morning. All the straw had been spun, and all the bobbins were full of gold. Thank you, little man. M may I know who you are? What's your name? The little man laughed and disappeared in an instant. At sunrise came the king, and when he saw the gold, he was astonished. Oh my goodness! I was thinking that your boastful father was lying to me. Now you go and take some rest. I will meet you in the evening. The miller's daughter thought that the king would now reward her and let her go home peacefully. But in the evening, the greedy king took her into another room filled with straw, much bigger than the previous room. If you value you and your father's life, you must spin all of this into gold tonight. The girl did not know what to do, so she began to cry again. Soon the little man appeared in the room again. Stop crying, girl. What will you give me if I spin all this straw into gold? The girl thought for a while and noticed the golden ring in her hand. 
the last precious thing she could offer him. Take this ring from my finger. The little man pulled the ring and began to spin the wheel, whirring round. By next morning, all the straw was spun into glistening gold. Thank you so much, little man. May I know who you are, please? The little man laughed and disappeared. The king came in and was rejoiced beyond the measure at the sight. Oh dear, you are a gift to our kingdom. I have no words left to praise your talent. Please go and take some sleep. I will meet you in the evening. At sunset, the king came to the girl and again took her into an even larger room full of straw. This too must be spun in one night. And if you accomplish this, you shall be my wife. I am not likely to find anyone better in the whole world. As soon as the girl was left alone, the little man appeared for the third time. What will you give me if I spin the straw for you this time? I have nothing left to give. <laughs> okay, okay, don't cry. Then you must promise me to give me your first child after you are queen. She had no other option but to say yes. Promise me that you will not forget your word. Yes, I promise. The little man began to spin all night much faster than before. All the straw was spun into gold. As he finished his work for the night, he laughed and disappeared immediately. In the morning, the king came and found all the work done according to his wish. Oh dear, you have proved yourself enough. I am going to marry you tomorrow. The miller's pretty daughter became the queen. In a year's time, she brought a child into the world. She forgot about her promise to the little man. One day, when she was all alone in her room, suddenly, the little man appeared in her room. <gasps> oh. Did you forget your promise, queen? No, I still remember it, but I love my baby very much. Can I ask some favor of you? Hmm. I'm the queen now. You can ask anything you want instead of my baby. I can give you whatever you ask for. No, I would rather have something living than all the treasures of the world. <laughs> oh, oh, little man, I beg you for this. Please leave my baby. Please. The little man had pity upon her. He put one strict condition to guess his name. I will give you three days, and if at the end of that time you cannot guess my name, you must give the child to me. <laughs> Thank you, little man. I will find your honorable name. I will find it. Okay, then. I will come back tomorrow. The queen spent the whole night thinking about all the names that she'd ever heard. Next day, she sent a messenger to ask far and wide for all the names that can be found. The little man came back. So, have you figured out my name? Yes. Is your name Casper? <laughs> that is not my name. Is your name Melchior? <laughs> no, it is not. Balthazar? No. <laughs> the queen repeated all the names she knew and went through the whole list given by the messenger. 
But after each meeting, <laughs> Mom laughed at her and said no. That's enough for the day. I will come back tomorrow. Be prepared. On the second day, the queen sent the messenger to the neighboring kingdoms to search the most unusual and singular names. The little man came back in the evening. The queen was ready with her list. Perhaps you are Roast Ribs? <laughs> that is not my name. Sheep Shanks? <laughs> no, it is not. Spindle Shanks? <laughs> no. <laughs> the queen went through the entire list, but after each name, the little man said no. Tomorrow is the last day, my queen, and I doubt you can save your baby. <laughs> the queen got worried. But on the third day, she heard something unusual from the messenger. I have not been able to find one single new name, but as I passed through the woods, I came to a high hill. And nearby there was a small house, and before the house burned a fire, and round the fire danced a comical little man, and he hopped on one leg and sung, Today I bake and tomorrow I brew, the day after that the queen's child comes in, and ooh, I am glad that nobody knew that my name is Rumpelstiltskin! <laughs> That's it! You cannot imagine how relieved I am! The queen immediately pulled out her necklace and gave it to the messenger as a reward. After some time, the little man reappeared. Now, queen, what is my name? Are you called Jack? No! <laughs> Are you called Harry? <laughs> then perhaps your name is Rumpelstiltskin. Oh, the devil told you that. The devil told you that. In his anger, he stamped the so hard that he fell to the ground above his knee. Then he seized his left foot with both his hands in such a fury that he split it in two. And there and then was the end of Rumpelstiltskin. And the queen lived happily with her child and king thereafter.